First, we have to understand the problem. We have to see clearly what is required. Second, we have to see how the various items are connected, how the unknown is linked to the data, in order to obtain the idea of the solution, to make a plan. Third, we carry out our plan. Fourth, we look back at the completed solution, we review and discuss it. Trying to find the solution, we may repeatedly change our point of view, our way of looking at the problem. We have to shift our position again and again. Our conception of the problem is likely to be rather incomplete when we start the work, our outlook is different when we have made some progress, it is again different when we have almost obtained the solution. It is foolish to answer a question that you do not understand. It is sad to work for an end that you do not desire. Such foolish and sad things often happen in and out of school, but the to prevent them from happening in his class. The student should understand the problem. But he should not only understand it, he should also desire its solution. We have a plan when we know, or know at least an outline, which calculations, computations, or constructions we have to perform in order to obtain the unknown. The way from understanding the problem to conceiving a plan may be long and tortuous. In fact, the main achievement in the solution of a problem is to conceive the idea of a plan. This idea may emerge gradually. Or, after apparently unsuccessful trials and a period of hesitation, it may occur suddenly, in a flash, as a bright idea. By looking back at the completed solution, by reconsidering and re-examining the result and the path that led to it, they could consolidate their knowledge and develop their ability to solve problems. The worst may happen if the student embarks upon computations or constructions without having understood the problem. It is generally useless to carry out details without having seen the main connection or having made a sort of plan. Many mistakes can be avoided if, carrying out his plan, the student checks each step. Some of the best effects may be lost if the student fails to re-examine and to reconsider the completed solution. If the student is lacking in understanding or an interest, it is not always his fault. The problem should be well chosen, not too difficult and not too easy, natural and interesting, and some time should be allowed for natural and interesting presentation. It is hard to have a good idea if we have little knowledge of the subject and impossible to have it if we have no knowledge. Good ideas are based on past experience and formerly acquired knowledge. Mere remembering is not enough for a good idea, but we cannot have any good idea without recollecting some pertinent facts. Materials alone are not enough for constructing a house, but we cannot construct a house without collecting the necessary materials. The materials necessary for solving a mathematical problem are certain relevant items of our formerly acquired mathematical knowledge, as formerly solved problems or formerly proved theorems. Thus, it is often appropriate to start the work with the question, do you know a related problem? Look at the unknown. Try to think of a familiar problem having the same or a similar unknown. The difference between seeing and proving, can you see clearly that the step is correct? But can you also prove that the step is correct? Errors are always possible, verifications are desirable. Can you check the result? Can you check the argument? Can you derive the result Can you see it at a glance? Imagine cases in which they could utilize again the procedure used or apply the result obtained. Can you use the result or the method for some other problem? To teach effectively a teacher must develop a feeling for his subject. He cannot make his students sense its vitality if he does not sense it himself. He cannot share his enthusiasm when he has no enthusiasm to share. How he makes his point may be as important as the point he makes. He must personally feel it to be important. Math has two faces. Mathematics presented in the Euclidean way appears as a systematic deductive science, but mathematics in the making appears as an experimental inductive science.